This post contains frank discussion of Season 4, Episode 11 of Outlander, titled If Not For Hope. Proceed with care. After a fraught Fraser family reunion and into the final third of the season, Outlander is once again divided between the adventures of Claire and Jamie and those of their daughter, Brianna. Poor Roger gets a little bit to do as well. At this point, the show knows how to handle the married Frasers with ease, but what of Brianna? Often a challenging character to root for in the books, due to her frequent clashes with her parents, Brianna has been given a bit of a smoothing over in the star's adaptation of the series. Still, she remains one of the seasons, and the show's, biggest challenges. Any attempt that Outlander has made to both deepen and soften Brianna, including giving her a truly touching backstory episode, has been complicated by the character's violent encounter with Stephen Bonnet several episodes ago. Everyone reacts to assault in their own way, but some viewers have found Brianna's response to be curiously muted, as though the writers who helped create her are trying to make her likable, rather than allowing the character to truly rage against what's been done to her. All the while, she's also making decisions that seem questionable, even after considering the trauma she's just undergone. The show's latest episode, If Not For Hope, proves especially that writing for Brianna Randall, Fraser is a tricky needle to thread. But actress Sophie Skelton, who spoke with Vanity Fair about negotiating the lingering aftermath of Brianna's harrowing assault, understands why the show is taking this approach. While some might see Brianna as lacking in sympathy to those around her, Skelton has a different point, she's actually just in a lot of pain. One of the thorniest aspects of Outlander Season 4 has been the show's attempt to balance the, relatively, progressive ideologies of its time-traveling protagonists with the realities of everyday life in colonial America. Whether it's tackling clashing attitudes toward gay characters, friendly, hostile Native Americans, female sexuality, or the slave-holding practices of the South, Outlander has been nothing but friction this season. Brianna, however, is a young American woman of the liberated 1960s living on a slave plantation, which complicates matters even further. In the books, she's gleeful about being weighted on hand and foot, though her feelings do come with some thoughts of guilt over the people helping her. At one point, unable to contain her curiosity and concern, Brianna blurts out a question to Joe Casta's right-hand man, Ulysses, did he want to be free? The man doesn't really answer but tells her his life story and Ted. On the show, though, we haven't seen anything like that yet from Brianna, the closest she's come to dealing with her feelings around participating in the slave economy is her insistence on drawing Phaedra, the woman waiting on her, as well as a number of other slaves on the plantation. Brianna's quiet defiance toward anyone who questions her choice in subjects is as revolutionary as she gets. But as Skelton explained, Brianna also has her own inner turmoil to grapple with, and it's constantly roiling, even in moments of outward calm. The hard thing for Bri is that she's really happy to put on this brave face, she said. She's happy to pretend that everything is fine, but Bri is just really putting on this facade. We've seen some eruptions from Brianna, chiefly directed at Jamie after his intolerable behavior in episode 10, but Skelton implies that we haven't seen Brianna's full explosion yet. Though her entire performance didn't make it onto the screen during the assault itself, Skelton says she played Brianna's reaction to Stephen Bonnet's attack as tonic immobility and involuntary paralysis that researchers believe is a not uncommon response to sexual assault. As Skelton discovered after studying a number of interviews with rape victims and footage of some confronting their attackers in court or elsewhere, that kind of reaction to assault usually results in even more debilitating PTSD down the road. They didn't feel it at the time, Skelton said, so they start to experience it later. In other words, for all her polite, strained smiles and passive demeanor, Brianna is still processing her grief, and we've not seen the last of her anger. Brianna's most triggering incident on Sunday came when she witnessed Lord John Gray in flagranti with another one of the male guests at River Run. In the context of the episode, Brianna's full body shock at the sight seems to have more to do with her own sexual trauma than it does her feelings around homosexuality. After that, though, 
the show has to deal with Brianna's ugliest, most desperate move from the books, trying to blackmail John into marrying her in order to protect herself from other suitors. To Brianna's credit, in both the show and the novel, she swiftly apologizes for threatening John. But in the books, her attitudes toward John, and chiefly his feelings toward her father, are a bit more insensitive, sheltered, and regressive. The two are still friendly and allies, but they have nothing near the affinity and shared warmth we see between the TV versions of these characters by the episode's end. On one hand, the book's approach is interesting, sexual assault victims deserve sympathy, even when they fall short of extending sympathy to others. On the other hand, Brianna's disassociation from her own pain is already a challenge to TV audiences. Skelton said that Brianna's muted response was intentional. All she wants to do is go to her room and cry. And just feel sorry for herself. She's petrified, but I never wanted it to come across that she's harsh. Skelton's concerns over how likable Brianna is, even in the midst of her character's darkest hour, baby coming, husband gone, trauma not fully dealt with, should be very familiar to any woman watching at home. Women have always had to round off their sharper edges in order to move through this world. But I, for one, can't wait to see Brianna tap even more deeply into the fear and anger that's bubbling just beneath her placid surface. Only then, as conventional wisdom dictates, will she be able to heal.